This update was sponsored by My Patriot Supply. Guys, My Patriot Supply has brought back their 25% discount on their three month emergency food supply. And to get the discount, you got to use the link preparewithnyprepper.com. And the link is in the description below this video. But this three month emergency food supply has a 25 year shelf life, it includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets, and free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts and to get to their general store you just got to click on the my patriot supply logo when you get to prepare with nyprepper.com at the top of the page and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running discounts here so use the link Prepare with nyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three month emergency food supply. And the link is in the description below this video. Guys, countless people are mistaking private browsing tabs as a way to stay anonymous online. Even with private browsing mode enabled, you can still be tracked by websites and internet service providers. Also, your data is still at risk if you are using unsecured or public Wi-Fi hotspots. That's why I've been protecting my privacy and data with Virtual Shield VPN. I sleep well at night knowing that my data and privacy is not exposed to governments, hackers, and big tech. And if you use the link in the description below this video, which is virtualshield.com slash deals slash nyprepper, you can get 70% off and a 60-day risk-free trial. With Virtual Shield's anonymous browsing, a strict no-log policy, unlimited bandwidth and built-in malware and ad blocking virtual shield also has 24 7 customer support and was built in the usa so start protecting yourself today use the link in the description which is virtualshield.com slash deals slash ny prepper to get 70 percent off and a 60-day risk-free trial The world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness, to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness. So you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past hundred years and are considered a safe investment. So text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information and to get started today.
What's going on, guys? Let me know if you can hear me. How's everybody doing tonight? We have an unscheduled live stream tonight. We have some emergency. We have some emergency news. Emergency alert tonight. Absolutely massive breaking news to share with you. So I'm going to just get right into the news here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to check the chat later on after I get through all the news. There's been a ton of news today. We had the solar eclipse earlier, which I covered live. If you want to re-watch the solar eclipse, you can definitely go and do that. And here I am. So um, we're just going to go through the news right now, and uh, then I'll check the chat later on. Um, K. Paul, how's it going, K. Paul? Hope you're doing well. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. I hear the sound loud and clear if your sound is low turn your volume up if you're not hearing anything that's not my problem because i'm hearing it right now on my phone loud and clear. so that's your problem not mine the audio is working good so i'm gonna get right into the breaking news um no time to waste here let me just share my screen with you guys Very, very serious news. Um, so we had this NOTAM go out today. What you're looking at here is a NOTAM notice to airmen. And I've been um, looking at this all evening. I was consulting with a pilot friend. I have a friend who's a pilot, and we were talking about this for like an hour to two hours this evening and so this NOTAM says that there's going to be rocket launches in the uh, Tehran area of Iran okay rocket launches so this is a warning to pilots that rocket launches will take place in these areas okay these coordinates says rocket launches will take place with area with the following coordinates and i actually put these coordinates uh on uh, google earth let me just share that with you guys so these are the coordinates that the notam puts out these yellow pins here hopefully you guys can see that so this is the area where the NOTAM says rocket launches are going to be taking place. So I don't know if this is the boundary and the rocket launches are going to be taking place within this area here. Or if these are the actual launch locations. But this is extremely serious, guys. It's very possible that the U.S. military had some intelligence. And maybe they spotted missile launchers on the move and they told the FAA to put out this NOTAM. Okay, but you can see right here, Defense Internet NOTAM Service. You can go to notams.faa.gov if you don't believe me. And it says right here, rocket launches will take place within the area with the following coordinates. And they list all these coordinates here. And this is for the Tehran area. Okay, Tehran Airport. So this is extremely concerning. Okay, this means that Iran is getting ready to launch missiles, most likely ballistic missiles, into Israel. Okay, rockets are just another word for ballistic missiles. Okay, so this could all pop off tonight, tomorrow night, sometime this week. We know that. A few days ago, 
um, Iran said, or actually the U.S. and Israel said that this attack would take place around the end of Ramadan. And tomorrow is the end of Ramadan. Actually, it's already the end of Ramadan right now because it's, I think, seven or eight hours ahead of us. Um, you know, it's already morning time over there in the Middle East, basically. So it's already the end of Ramadan right now. So it's possible that Iran is going to launch these missiles right now or maybe tomorrow. I have no idea. But this NOTAM is extremely concerning. This is not training. Okay, anybody who says that this is training mods, please delete their comment. This is absolutely not training. Okay, rocket launches will take place within this area. So this was put out by the FAA, a okay? defense internet NOTAM service. So I'm telling you guys, the U.S. military has some intelligence, probably satellites, probably uh, who knows, you know, geospatial intelligence that uh, Iran is going to be launching in this area, potentially towards Israel, okay? And uh, here's the location. So it's like in northern Iran. You can see all the yellow pins here. And what's interesting is one of the pins was actually, one of these coordinates is actually in central Iraq. So it looks like they might launch from central Iraq. And Vanessa Dubois, thank you for the donation. I really appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. And thanks to all the mods for showing up. Z Cali, K Paul, Ross Snyderman, Aldo. Thank you guys so much. Crow TN, Lee Billy, Michael Gale. Thank you guys for uh, showing up and keeping everything in line. So... Very concerning news, guys. You can see one of these coordinates. One of these coordinates is in Iraq. So they might launch these missiles towards Israel from Iraq. Because we had some breaking news earlier today that um, the uh, Iranian proxies have been instructed by Iran to launch a massive attack on Israel simultaneously. Okay, I repeat. Iranian proxies have been instructed by Iran to simultaneously launch a large-scale attack on Israel at the same time as Iran launches these missiles. So, uh, I'm not a flight expert. I was trying to decipher this NOTAM. That's why I was talking with my pilot friend tonight, and we were talking about this. Um, and my pilot friend told me this is legit, that most likely the U.S. had some kind of intelligence. And the intelligence basically led the U.S. to believe that, um, that Iran was going to be launching missiles from these areas, okay, ballistic missiles. So... Um, I don't know what to tell you guys, but get prepared. Okay, this NOTAM was created. You see down here at the bottom, created April the 8th at 1708. So that was this evening. This is my time, Eastern time. Okay, 1708 Eastern time, I believe, is when it was created. Um, I could be wrong, though. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I can't tell, but it says created today. So these are all the coordinates, guys. So um, it's going down. It's going to happen. Okay, town, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. So once again, these are the locations where uh, the NOTAM says rockets are going to be launched from over the next two to three days. Um, so you can see all the pins here. A lot of them are like east, southeast of Tehran. You can see like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, just east of Tehran. Okay, so I don't know if this is like a a boundary and they're expecting rocket launches within this area, or if these are the actual rocket launch sites and maybe the U.S. saw on satellite that you know there were some missile launchers preparing at these coordinates i don't know okay if anybody has an idea let me know 
if this is if if these coordinates are they the specific launch sites or are they the boundary of an area where the US expects Iran to launch rockets out of okay kingdom daughter thank you for the donation i hope you're having a good monday night and growing thank you for that donation yeah please pray for israel keep israel in your prayers keep the israeli people in your prayers this is very very serious guys okay um here's a more zoomed in look you can see all the uh coordinates here they're in the desert to the east of tehran okay so they're going to be launching missiles out of this area and they're putting up a notam for it okay and here's the notam this is not training i repeat this is not training so um want to just show you guys something interesting about tehran airport what you're looking at here are the arrivals this evening in Tehran airport and what's interesting is a lot of these flights have an unknown status these are flights that are supposed to arrive and they have unknown statuses look at all these unknown flights unknown 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 look at this guys there's some of them that landed but a lot of them are unknown so i don't know if these uh flights are being diverted now and that's why it says unknown this is uh, pretty concerning. So um wanted to go live and share this with you because it appears that Iran is on the verge of doing something big. And uh, here you can see departing flights out of Tehran. You can see all these unknowns, unknown, 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 just dozens and dozens of flights that are that have an unknown departure time, unknown arrival time. This is very unusual, guys. Very unusual. Another unusual thing is that there aren't a lot of nuclear warplanes in the air today, which is very strange because we've been seeing like a lot of nuclear warplanes over the last few months. We've been seeing like three, four, five, six, seven, eight nuclear warplanes per day. And today there were absolutely zero E6 Mercuries in the air which is very unusual, which tells me that they're flying with transponders off. Um, triggered, thank you for the donation. I appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. So hopefully my sound is still good. Let me know if you guys can still hear me, if everything is good with the stream. So this is very, very concerning, okay? Unknown arrival times, unknown departure times in Tehran airport for some reason. Not sure why, but um, something's going down. Yeah, the NOTAM was just put out. It doesn't say an end date to it. It just says created April 8th at 1708. It doesn't have an end date, but it says rocket launches will take place with the area within the area with following coordinates so maybe within the area where these coordinates are so that's what it looks like and it says daily daily 03 30 to 10 30 so it looks like in the morning time but i don't know if that's local time or if that's eastern time but it says here daily 03 30 to 10 30 daily okay um and it's yeah so it is i think it is uh i think that these coordinates here are actually like the boundary of the area that they expect the rockets to be launched from okay so it's like a big circular area to the east of tehran and a little bit south of tehran because there's a couple of coordinates that were south so but looks like most of it is most of these rockets are going to be launched from this area right here big circular area east of Tehran okay so um this is the real deal guys this is it you know this is the real deal looks like it's going to happen okay daily 0330 to 1030 rocket launches will take place within the following areas um but it doesn't have any information on when uh 
when it expires these are other no tams down here so this is extremely serious guys absolutely crazy okay so wanted to share that with you again arriving flights and departing flights in tehran international airport have unknown departing times unknown arriving times which could mean that they're uh diverting away potentially triggered says pray for israel prayers are powerful together yeah we all have to pray for israel tonight before you guys go to sleep tonight say a quick prayer for israel dana thank you for gifting 10 memberships i appreciate it hope you're having a good monday and in the year 2525 thank you for the donation So, just a crazy situation here. Um, I'm going to start reading off some headlines now. So, two American sources told CNN today that U.S. intelligence estimates or estimates indicate that Iran is urging armed groups to launch a simultaneous attack with drones and missiles on Israel. Okay? So, U.S. intelligence is saying that Iran is telling their pro its proxies to launch a simultaneous attack with Iran on Israel. Two American sources to CNN. Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khamenei, and other authorities have decided to give a direct response to Israel's airstrike against Iran's consulate in Damascus, or in response to Israel's airstrike against Iran's consulate in Damascus. Lebanese. Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah said, This time, unlike before, Iran's response won't be in another country, he added. Okay, so direct response. There's not going to be any proxies involved. This is going to be Iran launching a direct response. Now, the mainstream media is trying to say that, oh, it's only going to be uh, a response from Iranian proxies. I just saw like an hour ago. Uh, some breaking news from the mainstream media. Oh, U.S. sources say that Iranian proxies are going to do the attack, not Iran. And they're contradicting themselves because earlier today they said that Iran is urging the proxies to do a simultaneous attack with drones and missiles on Israel. And the chief of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, said that Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Khomeini, and other Iranian authorities have decided to give a direct response to Israel. Okay? So, um, Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and his government have been evacuated from Damascus and transferred to a bomb shelter near the Khmaimim Russian military base. Okay, uh, this is unconfirmed at this point. I just saw this from one source, but we have one source reporting that the Syrian president Bashar al-Assad and his government have been evacuated from Damascus and transferred to a bomb shelter near the Khmaimim Russian military base. Okay, so this is very, very serious and a large number of Israeli soldiers and heavy weapons were seen moving towards northern Israel today. The Israeli Defense Forces announced they're starting a big exercise in the western Galilee area and the northwest coast of Israel to get ready for fighting on many fronts, including southern Lebanon. The exercise will involve soldiers and equipment from different parts of the IDF, like the Northern Command and the Air Force, along with other groups like the police and fire services. People can expect to see lots of military activity, including naval ships, planes, and big vehicles. This morning, there was a noticeable movement of Israeli soldiers and heavy weapons in northern Israel near Haifa and in the upper Galilee region. Okay, so this is crazy, guys. This is absolutely insane. 
Israel is doing massive exercises in uh, northwestern Israel, near Haifa and near uh, Galilee. They're moving massive amounts of heavy equipment there. This is this is serious, guys. It's getting serious. Okay, it's it's very possible that Israel may skip the operation in Rafah. And they may just go right after Hezbollah, especially if all these proxies start attacking uh, Israel. If Iran launches missiles and then Hezbollah and all the Iranian proxies, the the Houthis, they all start attacking Israel at the same time. Israel's going to have to go into Lebanon. They're going to be fighting a multi-front war. The Israeli government is preparing for a multi-front war, guys. They're preparing for a war on all fronts. I reported that a couple of days ago. The Israeli military is preparing for a war on all fronts. Okay, this is extremely serious. And Lebanese security sources are reporting that a high-ranking field commander of Hezbollah's elite Radwan force and at least three other members of Hezbollah were killed last night in an Israeli airstrike against a compound within the town of As Sultania in southern Lebanon, and the Houthis are saying that 400,000 soldiers are ready to fight alongside Iran if a regional war breaks out with Israel. I repeat, the Houthis are saying they have 400,000 soldiers ready to fight alongside Iran if a regional war breaks out with Israel. The Iranian foreign minister left Damascus and is now heading for Tehran. He was meeting uh, probably with Bashar al-Assad, and now he's back in Iran. And a couple of days ago, I did an emergency alert showing the flight path of... Um, well, actually, I didn't show the flight path, but I was just mentioning that there was a VIP plane that flew from Tehran to Isfahan. Isfahan is where the Iranians have a massive bunker and a suspected nuclear facility. So very uh, interesting timing that a VIP plane would fly to Isfahan, you know, just a couple of days ago. Um, but this is very serious, guys. Very serious news. And uh, we also have some breaking news that uh, the Ayatollah Khomeini may uh, change the official Iranian policy of not having nuclear weapons. So in other words, they're going to officially declare that they're, um, they're going to officially allow for building nuclear weapons in Iran. They're going to officially... You know, I don't know uh, how their government is structured. It's some kind of Islamic law that they have, you know, but basically um, they're going to uh, eliminate the ban on building nuclear weapons, which they've already done secretly. It's just openly now they're going to officially announce that they're going to allow they're going to allow uh, constr uh, building of nuclear weapons in Iran. So this is very, very serious, and uh, we also have uh, Russian nuclear forces training. This was posted by the Russian government over the weekend. You can see this massive uh, nuclear missile here in Siberia. This is an RS-24 Yars. This is one of Russia's newest missiles. It was built like 15 years ago. It has uh, multiple warheads in it. And uh, they have a, a good amount of these. They have a few dozen of them. And so they did this exercise with their uh, nuclear forces over the weekend. So that's pretty serious. And um, Germany is going to be positioning a robust brigade of 4,000 soldiers in Lithuania amid Russian threats and Belarusian threats against the Baltic country. This was announced by the German defense minister. So Germany will be moving a robust brigade of 4,000 soldiers to Lithuania. This was announced by the German defense minister. Okay. So remember about a week or two ago, I was actually, it was like two weeks ago now. Um, I was sharing with you guys all that information about the uh, Belarusian 
mechanized brigade that was moved to within just a few miles of the Lithuanian border. Several dozen T-72s, several hundred BMPs and BTRs, and then the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, actually visited those forces on the border of Lithuania, literally five miles from Lithuania and probably just another 20 miles to the capital of Lithuania, Vilnius. So now Germany is going to be sending 4,000 soldiers. That's pretty serious. We'll see how quickly they get there. They're saying a robust brigade. So they have to get there quick, like not in six months, not in a year. They have to get there within a week or two which is not going to happen. Okay, they're going to take forever to do this. We have unconfirmed reports that Poland's president said that he's trying to buy nuclear weapons from the United States. Unconfirmed reports that the Polish president is trying to buy nuclear weapons from the United States. Unconfirmed. We do know that the Polish president uh, asked Biden last year if Poland could be part of the NATO nuclear sharing mission, and Biden turned the idea down. Maybe now he's going to try to buy warheads from the U.S., which would be uh, pretty serious. And, you know, Poland could adapt those warheads to some of the systems that they have already because they have a lot of Western missiles and a lot of Western uh, aviation and and stuff that they could probably adapt those warheads to if they were to buy them from the U.S. Um, I'm sure if Trump gets elected, Trump would definitely sell nukes to Poland for sure. I uh, want to just update you guys on all this military aviation that's been moving across the eastern U.S. What you're looking at here are three Chinook helicopters that were spotted in the Allentown International Airport earlier today. This was sent to me by a local who uh, actually works at the airport. So there were three Chinooks in Allentown, and uh, there were as many as 70 uh, helicopters of various types, military helicopters that were moved from Griffiths Air Force Base in Rome, New York, to the Philadelphia International Airport. and. Uh, there was no uh, reason given why they moved all these uh, helicopters. All they said was that they were going to be moving them from uh, Saturday through Monday, and they were going to go from Rome to Philadelphia, and they were going to make stopovers in Allentown and Scranton, Pennsylvania. Okay, and so I had numerous people sending me photos and videos from eastern Pennsylvania seeing all these helicopters moving from upstate New York to Philadelphia. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, Rome, New York, is where the Griffiths Air Force Base used to be located, and it's actually still home of the East Coast Air Defense Sector. Okay, so that's the HQ of the East Coast Air Defense Sector is right in Rome, New York. But why would they suddenly be moving all these Chinooks and Apaches. Here were some Apaches that were spotted uh, just yesterday. The same source that I have sent me this picture. One, two, three, four, five Apaches sitting at an airport in eastern Pennsylvania. This is very unusual, guys. This is not for anything domestic unless they're planning to use attack helicopters against us. I, I really doubt that uh, this is for anything domestic. Okay, unless they're going to really declare war on the people, uh, which I guess is possible these days. You just never know. Um, Samuel Turner, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. If Iran and Israel get into it, China will attack Taiwan. Yes, definitely. Most definitely. And uh, also Russia and Belarus are going to attack the Baltic countries. And North Korea may attack South Korea, and uh, potentially Russia could even attack Japan, or North Korea could attack Japan. Sheldon Lesser, thank you for the donation. We have two rivet joints and a doomsday plane in the air. What do I think of pellet rifles? Pellet rifles are good to have. They're uh, cheap and easy to use. Gary Richmond, thank you for gifting 20 memberships. 
Son of Seal, thank you for gifting a membership. Nancy Drew, thank you for the donation. Silvana Smith, thank you for the donation. Yes, God bless Israel. And Pork Eating Crusader says they were flying with full armament, making passes by my buddy's house every 20 minutes. Wow. Uh, that's pretty crazy. So yeah, five Apaches. This is just in one picture, guys. But uh, my sources told me that they saw multiple Apaches, Chinooks, flying in and out of Allentown and also flying over Scranton. And um, this story broke first by the Scranton Wilkes Bar International Airport. They put out a notice on their Facebook page saying that uh, people need to be aware that there's going to be a whole me uh, buttload of helicopters going from upstate New York, uh, transiting over the area to Philadelphia, supposedly, and people need to be aware that they're going to see a lot of military helicopters flying over and not to be alarmed. Uh, and there was no reason given what kind of helicopters, when, why, we don't know. But uh, very unusual to have Apache helicopters moving by the dozens. By the dozens, they said 70 helicopters. Okay, what do we need to move that many Apaches for? Okay, Apaches are attack helicopters. They're not transport helicopters. You can't do anything with them except attack with them. They have missiles. They have machine guns. Okay, they're an attack helicopter. Why are we moving suddenly dozens of them uh, for no reason from upstate New York to Philadelphia? It just absolutely makes no sense. And um, here we have some video footage that was shared with me by a resident of uh, Scranton, Scranton, Pennsylvania. You can see all these Chinooks here flying over Scranton. This was, I believe, Saturday. Look at this, guys. Multiple Chinooks. Okay, you can see four of them right there. And this was just one video. They were flying, from what I understand, uh, like all day on Saturday and, and Sunday also. Just multiple Chinooks, Apaches. So something's going on. I don't know what it is. We also had this convoy in upstate New York going towards Saratoga Springs in upstate New York. You can see this convoy of. Uh, Military trucks, okay, which is pretty unusual in that part of New York. We also had uh, some military trucks spotted around uh, Little Rock, Arkansas at a Walmart, parked in a Walmart, okay, very suspicious. We do know that uh, FEMA has contracts with Walmart to turn Walmart into, um, I don't want to say the word here, but. Um, you know, basically shelters, quote unquote shelters for people. Okay. Um, they do have contracts with FEMA to use Walmarts as emergency shelters, which Alex Jones started the conspiracy that, that they were really uh, detention centers that were going to be used by the government if there was any kind of uh, martial law situation here. In the U.S., um, they would detain people and put them into the Walmarts, and the Walmarts would be like makeshift prisons, essentially. Um, MDMD, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Paul Slasky, thank you for gifting 10 memberships. Carlton Sutton, thank you for the donation. Tammy Lott, thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So a lot of weird stuff going on. Here we have some pictures. Coming out of Washington, this was sent to me yesterday. Uh, let me see, where is this from? This is from Kalama, Washington. This was on the 5th, on Friday. This entire train full of equipment. Look at this, guys. Uh, in Kalama, Washington, southwestern Washington, the train was heading northbound. Okay, you can see some Humvees here. So it's getting pretty unusual with all this military equipment moving around the country. And Russian state television published statements from the terrorists who carried out the attack in the concert hall in Moscow. And according to the Russian government, 
the terrorists said that they were given instructions to go to Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, after the attack. They were told that there were people waiting at the border of Ukraine to help them cross the border. And apparently the Ukrainian army cleared mines on the road to the villages of Chukovka and Sapich in the Sumy region so the terrorists could safely enter into Ukraine. So big allegation there by uh, Russia. Russia saying that the terrorists confessed and said they were given instructions by Ukraine to go to Kiev after the attack, that there were people at the border of Ukraine that were going to wait for them to help them cross. Apparently, they were paid some money for it, and apparently the Ukrainian army cleared mines out of the way in the Sumy region so the terrorists could come back into Ukraine. That's what Russia's claiming. I'm not saying that that's true, okay? That's what Russia is claiming, okay? But you see Russia's doubling down on this idea that those attackers were funded by Ukraine and uh, that Ukraine planned the whole thing, okay? Here's another picture coming out of uh, southwestern Washington. All these military trucks here, just absolutely insane. Just a massive amount of equipment. Look at that, guys. Very strange. And we also had an F-15 fly from Tyndall Air Force Base to Springfield, Massachusetts today. Right before the solar eclipse, I want to remind you guys that an F-15 is primarily used now for uh, strike operations. These are not dogfighting jets. These are jets that are used to deploy uh, bombs and um, missiles and uh, nuclear bombs and nuclear warheads. Okay, The F-15 is a very fast plane. And its main mission now is to actually deploy nuclear weapons for NATO. That's the main mission of the F-15 is to deploy B-61s because they're very light and they're very fast. So they can travel extremely fast. And that allows them to kind of, uh, I guess, outrun uh, air defense systems. And so they can penetrate enemy airspace fly in really fast, drop a B-61 with, you know, 300 plus kilotons of explosive power on a target and then turn around and come back uh, or eject. And, uh, you know, but, you know, F-15 flying to Massachusetts right before the solar eclipse, very unusual. It appears to have either landed or did some touch and goes at the west over Air Reserve Base in Springfield, Massachusetts. So that's pretty interesting. We also had a U-2 spy plane take off from uh, Northern California, and it went out into the Pacific. I don't know where it ended up going, but I don't know if this is the same one that flew from Hawaii. Over the weekend, there was a, a U-2 that flew from Hawaii to California. And I don't know if this is the same one, but uh, pretty rare to see a U-2. And this was right before the solar eclipse. Weird timing uh, for these planes to suddenly go airborne uh, right before the solar eclipse. What's going on, Charles and Christina? Thank you for the donation. I appreciate the support. So continuing on. Uh, with more breaking news, uh, Russia's ambassador to the UN, uh, or I'm sorry, Russia's ambassador to the UN nuclear watchdog, the IAEA, has said that uh, his country had called an emergency meeting of the IAEA's 35 nation board of governors over what it says are Ukrainian attacks on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Russia requested an extraordinary session of the board with regard to the recent attacks and provocations of the armed forces of Ukraine against the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, Mikhail Ulyanov said on social media platform X. The board's rules state that any country on it, such as Russia, can call a meeting. Okay, so Russia wants a meeting of the IAEA to discuss what happened uh, 
uh, sa- I think it was Saturday, the three drones that hit the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, one of them apparently crashed into a containment dome. One of them hit some kind of Russian military truck, causing a casualty because there were blood stains on the truck. And then another drone was apparently shot down by a Russian soldier with a rifle. And uh, so I don't know if that's a Russian false flag that Russia is sending those drones at their own power plant to make it seem like, oh, Ukraine is attacking us. And, you know, that that could be a potential scenario how Russia melts down that power plant. Um, if they were to do, let's say, a false flag on it, that would be one way of doing it because they would just blow up their own power plant and say, oh, it was a Ukrainian drone. A Ukrainian drone did it, you know. And how's the UN or the West going to know it was a Ukrainian drone? They're ju- it's just Russia's word versus Ukraine's word unless they actually have, you know, I don't even know if radars can track those drones that if they're very small and they fly very low. I don't even think they could track them, but you know, Russia could launch a, uh, their own drone against this power plant and blame it on Ukraine and melt down the power plant or cause some kind of an incident. But uh, Russia's ambassador to the IAEA is calling an emergency meeting uh, about this uh, drone attack on the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant the other day over the weekend. And Ukraine sabotaged a Russian warship in the Baltic Sea in Kaliningrad yesterday, which is a first for Ukraine. We've seen Ukraine attack St. Petersburg with drones and the Black Sea Fleet, but they're now targeting the Russian Baltic Fleet. Ukraine's GUR military intelligence took credit for the sabotage, which caused a fire on the Russian missile ship Serpukov at the Baltisk naval base in occupied Kaliningrad. It's funny how they call it occupied Kaliningrad. The incident took place on April 7th, so that was yesterday. So yesterday, uh, Ukraine sabotaged a Russian warship in the Baltic Sea. That's insane. Absolutely crazy. Um, And Israel used its ship-mounted Iron Dome system known as Sea Dome for the first time to intercept a suspected drone in the port city of Eilat. The Times of Israel reported the interceptor missiles were launched from an Israeli Navy SAR-6 class corvette. So Israel intercepting drones uh, with one of their SAR-6 corvettes using the Iron Dome system mounted on this ship. Uh, in southern Israel, in the port of Eilat. Very concerning. Uh, Iran's foreign minister says the manner in which Iran will respond to Israel will become clear in the battlefield. From Damascus, I declare loud and clear that Israel will be punished. The U.S. is responsible for the attack on the Iranian embassy and must be held accountable. Wow, that's what the Iranian foreign minister said. He said the U.S. is responsible for the attack on the Iranian embassy and must be held accountable. I declare loud and clear that Israel will be punished. So very strong words there from Iran, from the Iranian foreign minister. And what you're looking at here is a picture of a new Ukrainian attack drone that has a range of 3,300 kilometers. Absolutely insane. This is the SoCal 300. So this thing can basically fly all the way into Siberia from Ukraine. That is absolutely insane. And uh, Ukraine is going to build like millions and millions of drones this year. That's one of the big things that Ukraine is going to do is they're going to be building like millions of drones. They're going to have the largest drone force or uh, drone inventory of any country in the world, basically. Uh, Because drones are effective, they're cheap, they fly below radar, it's not expensive to to build them. You can put a lot of uh, explosive material in them and you can do a lot of damage with these kinds of drones. As you guys see, all the uh, oil refineries that Ukraine has taken down in the last month, they've taken down dozens of Russian oil refineries reduce their oil production by like 10 to 15 percent which is still a drop in the bucket but imagine if ukraine keeps attacking russia with these drones i mean they can just swarm russia with just millions of drones i I think i heard 
that uh, Zelensky's going to Zelensky ordered the military in Ukraine to build like 2 million drones, 2 million drones. That is just insane, guys. I mean, uh, you know, that's just crazy. And these drones can evade air defense. You know why? Because they're very small. And so they're because they're small, they have a small cross section on the radar. And then in addition to that, they fly very low. They can fly extremely low, like lower than a cruise missile. So they completely evade uh, air defenses. So that's why they're so effective. And really the only air defense that works against drones is what they call SHORAD or VSHORAD, which is short range air defense or very short range air defense. So that's like literally like a machine gun. And, you know, you see the drone coming in and you shoot the drone with the with the heavy machine gun. That's what SHORAD is or VSHORAD. That's really the only air defense that works for these types of drones. And it's just impossible for Russia to put, you know, machine, you know, massive anti-air machine guns all across their country in every single oil refinery, every single substation, every single uh, infrastructure site. It's just impossible because Russia is so large. Ukraine can, can hit all these different targets now. You know, Ukraine, if they have millions of drones i mean just imagine how many different targets they can hit russia is a huge target they're a massive country they have all different kinds of facilities spread out across their territory so this is a very smart move by ukraine for them to do this um paul slasky thank you for the donation uh I know you are afraid of showing the full videos, but if you say warning, this video is for educational purposes and contains original text, you will not have any strikes. Yeah, that's not true, uh, Paul, but thank you so much for the donation. Unfortunately, that's not true. Uh, YouTube uses uh, various types of artificial intelligence and they have automated scanners. So it doesn't matter what warning you put before any video, YouTube does not like any combat footage. They don't like any videos of things blowing up and they don't like videos of natural disasters they don't like videos of rubbled buildings they hate that okay so uh it's just not worth it for me to share that and have my channel shut down and my livelihood taken away for a 20 second video clip uh i'm sorry i wish i could take that chance but it's not worth it for me you know this is how i this is how i feed my family so it's just not worth it for me, unfortunately. Um, but thank you very much. Uh, yeah, or anything that's copyrighted. That's that's right. Um, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. You know, uh, you really don't need to see the visual. I can tell you the news. You don't have to always see. You know, the 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 gore and the chaos and stuff if you want to see that you can go on to telegram or twitter there's plenty of that over there uh unfortunately i can't share that i'm sorry guys um so uh greece is preparing to sell 108 fighter jets of which 32 f-16s are likely to be transferred to ukraine so greece could give ukraine 30 f-6 32 f-16s the Block C and the Block D, uh, which are, you know, they're good F-16s. They're the same same type of F-16s that Poland has and a lot of NATO countries have. But one thing about the F-16s, guys, is F-16s are nuclear capable, okay? Ukraine could theoretically deploy the B-61 nuclear gravity bomb, which NATO has hundreds of them. In Europe, they could theoretically use the F-16 to deploy those. Um, I'm not saying they would. Uh, that's what Russia says. That's what Putin says. But I don't think Ukraine would do that. It would be stupid, obviously. But I'm just letting you know that F-16s are nuclear-capable fighter jets. And uh, for the NATO nuclear uh, sharing mission, the F-16s are one of the primary fighter jets that NATO would use to deliver nuclear weapons to uh, Russia. They would use F-16s, F-15s, uh, now F-35s because F-35s just got certified to carry the B-61s. So 
A lot of uh, NATO countries are slowly transitioning away from the F-16 and moving to the F-35. And what's going to happen, and this is uh, obviously done by design, is NATO basically wants to create this massive force of mini stealth bombers because every F-35, you got to look at it as a mini stealth bomber, okay? Because every F-35 can carry a B-61 gravity nuclear bomb, and those B-61s have a yield of over 300 kilotons, and they're actually making a new B-61, the Mod-13. The B-61 Mod-13 is going to have the same accuracy as the Mod-12, but it's going to have the same blast yield as the Mod-11. So it's going to combine the largest B-61 warhead with the most ac accurate B-61 warhead into one. So it's going to be the best B-61 ever made, and they're working on it right now. It's going to have a 370 kilo. 375 kiloton warhead that can be deployed from F-35s, F-22s, F-16s, F-15s, the uh, French uh, Mirage 2000s. I think also the Eurofighter Typhoon can deploy them. But really the F-35s are now a mini stealth bomber because they can each carry that B-61 with 375 kilotons, guys, each one. That is massive, massive firepower okay can you imagine like a hundred or 200 f-35s flying into russia each one with a b-61 and they fly over different targets and they just start dropping b-61s everywhere and that's not including the u.s nuclear arsenal okay that's just that's just the, uh the european nuclear arsenal that's not including the american nuclear arsenal um, you know, but that's what NATO's trying to do. They're trying to build up this big force of mini stealth bombers, hundreds of them, because every single European country now is ordering a few dozen F-35s. Poland ordered 30 F-35s. Finland ordered a few F-35s. I think like 30 also. Uh, Greece, I think, is ordering them. Um, all the Western European countries are ordering them. So by when all is said and done, Europe's going to have hundreds of F-35s that are all nuclear capable. So that's a pretty serious, uh, you know, force. And I uh, want to just show you guys something interesting here. What you're looking at here is um, some NATO reconnaissance activity that was going on this evening. Uh, we've been seeing this. U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon subhunter that's been patrolling off the coast of Kaliningrad for the last few days, basically every single day, every single day for the last week, we've been seeing these P-8 Poseidon subhunters uh, flying parallel to the coast of Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad is a Russian exclave. It's a piece of Russia that's stuck between Lithuania and Poland. It's not connected to the rest of Russia. And the story behind Kaliningrad, for those of you guys who don't know, is uh, it all has to do with World War II. And basically what happened was uh, Stalin, when they carved up Poland after World War II, when, uh, Eis uh, not Eisenhower, uh, FDR, when they decided how to carve up Germany and Poland, Stalin wanted to keep Kaliningrad, and then when the USSR collapsed, Kaliningrad stayed a part of Russia. Um, but we've been seeing these sub hunters patrolling uh, the coastline of Kaliningrad here the last few days, and uh, the Russian military is doing some kind of an exercise here. They're doing a massive military exercise in the Baltic Sea. Um, they're going to do like uh, combat readiness drills. Which is interesting because Lithu uh not Lithuania, uh Belarus, Belarus is doing combat drills and they've put their entire military on combat alert right now. And they moved all these forces to the border of Lithuania. They have S four hundreds right on the border of Poland. I showed you guys, I think it was like a week or two ago. I showed you guys the pictures of the S four hundreds that are literally two miles from the Polish border, right near the Suwalki Gap. Okay, like several dozen S-400 launchers, probably, you know, 50 missiles or so, interceptor missiles that uh, Belarus has. Obviously, they're Russian, 
So Russia set them up uh, just two miles from the Polish border. And why are they there? They're there to deny Poland air superiority over the Suwalki Gap. If Belarus and if Russia were to make a move on Lithuania, they have the S-400s right there so they can deny Poland the ability to fly sorties and bomb all the uh, infantry that's going to be trying to cross over Lithuania and connect Kaliningrad to Belarus. So a uh, very serious situation, but we have this uh, sub hunter here again. And then we also have this U.S. Navy uh, Seahawk, Sikorsky Seahawk, flying very low off the coast of Kaliningrad. Very, very interesting. Look at how close that thing is to uh, Kaliningrad. And uh, this is where the uh, Ukrainian sabotage attack took place on that Russian warship here in Baltisk. That's where uh, Russia has their Baltic fleet headquarters or the, whatever you want to call it. Their home base is right here, uh, very close to Poland. I mean, literally 20 miles from Poland. Their Baltic fleet uh, home base is there. So uh, U.S. military forces are uh, patrolling Kaliningrad like crazy lately. So something's brewing over there. And again, Belarus has put their uh, military on combat alert. So um, I'm going to check the chat later. When I'm done with the news, I'll check the chat and see what you guys are saying. We just have a lot of news to get through tonight. I want to get through it all first before I check the chat. Uh, Ruthie Green, thank you for the donation. And thanks to everybody who donated tonight. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. It helps a lot. Um, so, uh, you know, Russia's doing uh, naval exercises at the same time as Belarus has put their military on combat alert and they've moved an entire brigade to within five miles of the Lithuanian border. That's not a coincidence, okay? There's no such thing as coincidences in war. Everything is planned out, okay? And there's literally no NATO forces that would stop Belarus from going right to Vilnius. Vilnius is literally 20 miles from the Belarus border, and there's zero NATO forces in between Belarus and Vilnius. They could get to Vilnius within 30 minutes or an hour, depending on what kind of forces they have. Uh, they could surround Vilnius within two hours at the most, okay? And there's nothing there. That's why Germany is suddenly deploying 4,000 soldiers a robust brigade and remember also a week ago you know with all the all the uh apache helicopters and stuff and all the helicopters being moved in eastern pa i want to remind you guys um about a week ago the giant con the giant uh ship in uh charleston south carolina there was this giant naval ship that was loaded with like 1500 pieces of equipment various types of equipment uh which is extremely unusual um and apparently apparently they uh loaded all that equipment on the ship in case of a contingency so they have a ship loaded with equipment that they can deploy immediately if something were to happen and my guess is it has something to do with the Baltics. I don't think it has anything to do with Israel because Israel uh, and Iran, that's that's uh, not a land war. Okay, Iran is not going to invade Israel by land. They're going to just launch lots of missiles because Iran is very far away from Israel. So any war between Israel and Iran is just going to be a missile war. It's not going to be a land war. There were some people that were, you know, the typical uh armchair experts you know everybody knows everything uh those types of people that sit at home and watch tv all day and think they know everything about everything they were saying oh that can't be for europe because they're painted sand color they're going to israel well uh any kind of war with israel and iran or israel and hezbollah it's not going to be a land war because it's not going to be a big land war it's going to be a missile war 
uh, a fighter jet war, maybe a naval war, but not a land war, okay? Not 1,500 Humvees and stuff. You don't need that in Israel, okay? Um, and yeah, drone swarms, yep, drone swarms, that's another thing, uh, especially if they're coming from uh, Lebanon, but you know, Iran is very far away from Israel. You know, they, they look like they're close, but Iran is like the size of Alaska. It's a huge country. So for Iran to launch anything from their territory to Israel is like the equivalent of Alaska launching a missile to Washington state. You know, it's a huge distance. So just keep that in mind and let alone sending a big army to invade Israel. Uh, they would not do that. The only only country that would do that would be potentially Russia, but Russia doesn't have the forces in Syria at the moment. Not right now. They don't have the forces uh, in Syria, but they could eventually do that. And the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38 and 39, that this huge alliance of countries, Iran, Russia, uh, I think Syria and a bunch of Middle Eastern, North Africa, North African countries, they get together to try to attack Israel in the end times, halfway through the tribulation period, after a peace treaty is signed. That's when this attack, surprise attack occurs with an uh, alliance of countries led by Russia. So, um, but right now at the moment, Russia doesn't have that many forces in Syria to be able to actually successfully conduct a land invasion of Israel. Uh, so what you're looking at here is a RC-135 rivet joint that's flying over, uh, this was earlier today, flying over northeastern Poland, and it flew along the border of Belarus and Russia here. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is this is very concerning. Okay, the amount of reconnaissance in the Baltics and Poland is it's crazy. Uh, we had a nuke sniffer plane fly towards China earlier. This was in the afternoon, uh, like right after the solar eclipse. We had this WC-135 Constant Phoenix fly straight towards China. It took off from uh, looks like Okinawa. Um, that's insane. I don't know where it was going, but this is a nuke sniffer plane. These planes detect radiation in the atmosphere. I don't know why they would send one directly towards China. Um, pretty, pretty suspicious, pretty unusual. Um, but I'm going to continue to monitor this for you and update you on what happens with this plane. And let's see, what else do I have for you? And this is the uh, ship that the Ukrainians sabotaged, apparently caused some kind of fire. This is one of the warships in uh, the Baltic fleet that the Ukrainians targeted. This is, I think this is the first time, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first time that the Ukrainians have targeted a Russian warship in the Baltic fleet. Okay, that's very interesting. So, um... Cold War Prepper says it's logical to assume that Persia is Iran. Yep, yeah, Persia is definitely Iran, Iraq area, definitely, I have no doubt. Uh, Rodney Middleton, good to see you, hope you're doing well. Um, let me just continue on with the news here. Some interesting news coming out of France. France's foreign minister said Monday... It was no longer in Paris's interest to talk to Russia after differing accounts emerged from a rare phone call about last month's deadly attack on a Moscow concert hall. It is not in our interest currently to hold discussions with Russian officials because the statements and the summaries issued by them are lies, Stefan Sojourn told broadcasters France 24 and RFI. French President Emmanuel Macron last week slammed what he termed Russia's bizarre and threatening tone following a conversation between French Defense Minister Sebastian Lecornu and his Russian counterpart Sergei Shoigu. France said Lecornu had aimed to pass on to Moscow useful information about the March 22 attack, which killed more than 140 people near the Russian capital. 
The Islamic State group claim responsibility for the attack. Le Cornu's ministry had reported him as saying France was ready to step up exchanges to battle terrorism, but Russia responded by warning France that it hoped the French secret services had not been involved in the attack, according to a readout from the Russian Defense Ministry. Before France can talk to the Russians again, perhaps we must first establish trust. Perhaps above all, the military situation develop on the ground in Ukraine to enable a renewal of relations. This is not currently the case, said Sojourn. So this is crazy, guys. Uh, the French foreign minister spoke with the Russian foreign min or the French uh, defense minister spoke to the Russian defense minister. And they were the French were basically saying, "Oh, we can exchange information on ISIS, you know, to battle terrorism together because France is hosting the Olympics this year, so they probably wanted to, you know, exchange information and stuff." And the F Russian defense minister said, "Well, we hope that France wasn't involved in this attack." The French secret services. That's just crazy, guys. So, uh. You know, tensions between France and Russia are very high right now, especially after Macron said that he was going to send troops to Ukraine. Uh, Canada has announced it's considering joining the AUK US alliance, which is a US, UK, and Australian alliance to uh, acquire nuclear submarines. So Canada wants to acquire nuclear submarines with under ice capabilities to patrol their Arctic coastline. Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada, said it will become particularly important as trade via the Northwest Passage will increase. So that's pretty serious, guys. Canada wants nuclear submarines. We know that Australia is buying nuclear submarines. Now Canada wants them. And Australia also purchased a bunch of uh, Tomahawk missiles, which, by the way, Tomahawk missiles are nuclear capable. They can carry the W-80 nuclear warhead. So, uh, pretty interesting. And the Centers for Disease Control issued a health alert on Friday to inform healthcare workers and the public of a confirmed human infection of the bird flu. A worker on a commercial dairy farm in Texas developed conjunctivitis, commonly known as pink eye, on March 27th and then tested positive for the highly pathogenic avian influenza. The CDC said HPAI viruses have been reported in the Texas area's dairy cattle and wild birds, but before this incident, there have been no previous reports on the spreading of HPAI from cows to humans. The patient did not report any other symptoms and was not hospitalized. The person received antiviral treatment and is recovering, and the patient's household members have not become sick, the CDC said. No additional cases of human infection with the H5N1 bird flu associated with the current infections in dairy cattle and birds in the United States and no human to human transmission of H5N1 have been identified, the CDC said. The CDC said it tested the patient's virus genome and sequences from cattle, wild birds, and poultry. It found minor changes, and they both lack changes that would make them better adapted to infect mammals. The Department of Agriculture has confirmed infections of dairy cattle herds in four states, Texas, Kansas, Michigan, and New Mexico, with results in a fifth, Idaho, presumed to be positive. So five states now, uh, has five states with bird flu uh, outbreaks in uh, dairy cattle. The CDC said the spread has likely been due to the movement of cattle across state lines. States like Nebraska have issued temporary restrictions on cattle imports because of the bird flu. The patient in Texas is the second person in the U.S. to test positive for the disease. The first person to test positive was a patient in Colorado in April 2022 who had contact with infected poultry. The CDC said the risk remains low but recommended people with jobs or recreational activities that could expose them to infected birds, cattle, or other animals are at higher risk and should take precautions. 
So any of you guys out there that work at a veter uh, veterinarian or animal hospital, if you work with animals, you need to be on high alert for bird flu, okay? Uh, the virus historically has shown to be deadly, killing more than 50% of its human victims from, 20, from 2003 to 2016. The current outbreak has spread to affect 82 million birds in 48 states. The worst outbreak of bird flu in U.S. history, guys. Okay, nobody's talking about it. The mainstream media is not talking about this, but this is the worst bird flu outbreak uh, in the U.S. in history. Okay, 82 million birds, guys. Eggs are going to go up. Milk is going to go up. They have to cull all these birds. They're going to have to kill them so that it doesn't spread. So uh, prices of food are going to skyrocket. But this is very serious. We got to monitor the situation with the bird flu uh, in addition to everything else going on with Iran and all these other uh, war fronts around the world. So, uh, you know, bird flu is another thing that we got to keep an eye on. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I had a subscriber from uh, Clinton, Oklahoma, tell me that they saw 50 to 60 unmarked military vehicles parked at an airport in uh, the Clinton, Oklahoma area, along with several fighter jets that were observed flying over the airport. Apparently, this uh, airport has one of the longest runways in the U.S., and it was used by the military during the Cold War. Uh, and apparently, there was a school nearby that airport uh, that apparently some uh, military came in and inspected the school for an unknown reason. So, pretty weird. Um, more military movements and uh, a major flood in the Russian city of Orsk has forced thousands of people to evacuate with Moscow reporting a critical situation Sunday and warning of dangerous water levels in Siberia. Russia has evacuated more than 4,500 people after major floods in the Orenburg region near Kazakhstan. Russia has introduced a federal emergency situation in the southern Orenburg region where the Ural River has flooded Orsk and now threatens the main city of Orenburg. Torrential rain caused a dam near Orsk in the southern Urals near Kazakhstan to burst Friday night, with authorities saying more heavy rainfall will cause water levels to continue to rise. Images show Orsk almost entirely flooded with only the top of submerged cars visible. Authorities have said more than 4,500 people have been evacuated from Orsk and that more than 6,500 homes were flooded throughout the Orenburg region. The Kremlin has warned of nature anomalies and ordered preparations for expected floods in Siberia's Kurgan and Tumen region, while Orsk or Orsk, a city of 200,000 people, is worst affected by the flooding. Water levels on the Ural River were also rising fast in the regional hub of Orenburg, home to some 560,000 residents. A critical situation has developed in Orsk, Russian Emergency Situations Minister Alexander Kurenkov said while visiting the city. Images published by his ministry showed him going through the flooded city on a boat, passing typical Soviet-era housing blocks where water reached the first floor. He also visited evacuees in temporary housing centers. Nature does not tolerate mistakes, Kurenkov said, calling on authorities to ensure timely evacuations over the next three days. The flood situation can change rapidly, he warned. Orenburg regional authorities said they expected the peak of the flood on April the 9th, which is tomorrow, and for the situation to stabilize after April the 20th. Russia's weather monitor, Ross Gidromet, said that water levels on the Ural River in the main city of Orenburg will reach dangerous levels over the next three days. The situation remains critical. Its mayor, Sergei Salman, wrote on Telegram on Sunday, adding that the water level has risen 28 centimeters or 11 inches since the previous day. His office said 403 homes have been affected by the flooding in Orenburg. The Kremlin said Vladimir Putin was getting information on the floods in Orenburg region in real time, 
Putin ordered the governors of the Siberian regions of Tumen and Kurgan to prepare for expected sharp rise in water levels and inevitable floods. His spokesman Dmitry Peskov told Russian media, Peskov said local hydraulic stations showed an abnormal increase in water levels not seen in a hundred years. So a hundred year flood going on in Russia right now, guys. Absolutely insane. We have a hundred year flood going on in Russia right now. That is just absolutely crazy. Uh, we also have this RC-135 over South Korea right now. Check this out. Patrolling the border with North Korea. And we have this Russian emergency situations plane that flew to uh, northern Siberia. It's pretty interesting. So uh, that's the latest breaking news, guys. Wow, that took so much uh, time to go through all that breaking news. That's why I wanted to do this live stream. And then also uh, the rocket launch NOTAM in Iran. Um, so that's the latest breaking news that I have. And I'm going to check the chat now and see what you guys are saying. But I'm going to monitor the situation in Iran. And I'll update you guys if I have any new news related to that. Uh, but it looks like we could see an attack on Israel in the coming hours or in the coming days. Um, you know, it's already uh, the end of Ramadan and U.S. and Israeli intelligence said that Iran would already attack by now. So we definitely have to keep an eye on the situation. Um, What's going on, Cats 1964? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good Easter. I hope everybody had a good Easter. Uh, Aldo Schmedak, I hope you're doing well. Blue Angel. Deidre Fat, thank you for showing up tonight. Thanks to everybody who donated. I appreciate it. Um. It could be after sunset. Yeah, it could be after sunset tomorrow. Uh, very possible. Um, which would be what? Like morning, late morning or midday here in the U.S.? Something like that. Probably like midday. Uh, yeah, Ramadan is over. Yep, Ramadan is over. You know, another interesting thing is the 2023 or the 2024 eclipse. The eclipse today and the eclipse in 2017 intersected over the new madrid fault line which is pretty crazy i don't know if you guys know that or not but um they intersected over the new madrid fault line so that's pretty concerning marie thank you for the donation i appreciate it reina says thank you greg this was an awesome live I'm glad you thought it was awesome. Thank you, Reina. Uh, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Um, highly recommend everybody read Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, I also have some EAMs that I uh, wanted to play for you guys. Emergency action messages. Uh, let me play them for you. You can hear them. So this was earlier today, actually right before I went live. The EAMs were going off. I caught two of them right before. This is Flyfish out. This is Lodges with a test count. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. This is Lodges out. Sirens in Poland? Where are you? Sirens in Poland. I say again, this 
This is Flyfish. Flyfish, standing by for traffic. This is Flyfish out. This is Lodges with a test count. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. This is Lodges out. Someone's saying something about Poland. Kimmy, thank you for the donation, Kimmy. I appreciate it. Sirens in Poland. Someone's saying sirens in Poland. Yeah, when you guys report information about that, make sure it's a solid source. Um. There's a lot of fake news out there that people spread just to get clicks. I'm going to check up on the uh the Poland thing I'll actually turn on the uh I'll turn on the EAMs now so we can we can listen to the EAMs Got the EAM set up, so if anything comes in, we'll hear it. Um, yeah, sirens in Poland is a is a, seems like right now I'm not hearing anything about it. Um, but we do have breaking news that. Uh, uh Iranians have posted or there's a NOTAM for rocket launches in Iran. You can see the coordinates here. So uh very, very concerning. This is a NOTAM that was put out by the FAA. Very concerning, guys. Very concerning. Thank you again, Kim, for the donation. I appreciate it. Red alert in Northwest Israel. Creep alert. Who's a creep? 
Do I need to put on a pot of coffee? Uh, I don't think you need to put on a coffee, a pot of coffee just yet. Um, subscribers in Warsaw said, someone in Warsaw said that there were sirens. Um, interesting. Uh, I reported the other day that, uh, a couple days ago, actually, I reported that, um, Uh, Poland moved a bunch of tanks. They moved their M1 Abrams to um, to uh, Warsaw. They moved a bunch of M1 Abrams from Warsaw or to Warsaw from Western Poland. Uh, I want to also remind you guys that Belarus moved their fighter jets from western belarus to eastern belarus so they moved all their fighter jets away from poland and you don't do that unless you're expecting something to escalate so so you know belarus moving me uh, mechanized brigades to their border with Lithuania and then they're moving their fighter jets from western Belarus to eastern Belarus is a sign that uh, something's about to go down in the Baltic countries um, but this is very serious uh, with Iran this NOTAM here Okay, saying that uh, rocket launches are going to take place. Rocket launches will take place in this area daily from 0330 to 1030. So they're expecting this to happen in the morning, it looks like. I don't know. I think that's local time. I don't see why they would put like U.S. time or something. 0330 to 1030. I'm guessing that's Iranian time. So it looks like Iran is going to launch these strikes in the morning. Um, which would be nighttime over here, I believe. Um, very serious. Some other NOTAMs here, older NOTAMs, but... Uh, this is the main NOTAM right here for Tehran. This is pretty serious, guys. Trying to check up on the uh, Poland thing. A bunch of people were saying there were sirens heard in Poland. And the situation with bird flu is just rapidly spiraling out of control. The largest outbreak of bird flu in U.S. history, guys. Apparently, there was an explosive device left on the porch of a satanic temple in Salem, Massachusetts. The FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force are investigating. Wow. We have breaking news. Uh, Israel's security ca cabinet discussed a preemptive strike on Hezbollah in a secret meeting on October 11th. Air Force jets were on standby to launch an immediate assault. This was uh, released by Israeli Channel 13. Wow. So back in the fall, Israel was considering launching a preemptive strike on Hezbollah with fighter jets. Interesting. Very interesting. So actually, I'm looking at this NOTAM, and this is for uh, April the 10th through April the 12th, it looks like. That's what it looks like to me, because it says here 240410. So that's the date. That's 2024. 04 is April, and then 10. 
And then the hour 0330, which is 3.30 in the morning, to 2404.12 to 10.30. So um, so it looks like this is going to be from Wednesday through Friday. Wednesday through Friday morning from 0330 to 1030 is when uh, this this could potentially happen. Rocket launches. OK, so I'm going to be covering this uh, potentially live every night on those days. We'll see if something happens. I'll definitely go live. But uh, this is the area I marked it out on the map here. And you can see uh, a pretty significant portion of Iran. So it looks like Wednesday through Friday is the time period potentially for um, these attacks. So, uh, very, very concerning, guys. Okay. And um, Iran is going to respond directly is what they're saying. Iran is going to respond directly and their, their proxies are going to be involved at the same time. Thank you, K-Paul, for sharing my nuclear war survival videos. I appreciate it. Ben, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Bailey says it's 7.04 a.m. in Iran, so they could be launching soon. Yeah, they could. Um, now, this NOTAM is for, uh, you know, this NOTAM is for um, Wednesday through Friday. But, I mean, who's to say it can't happen tomorrow? Anything coming out of Offutt Air Base? Uh, that's a good question. Let's let's see. We'll check right now. Uh, last I checked, it was very quiet. We got a rivet joint over Offutt right now. We have another rivet joint. Um... I'm not seeing any doomsday planes. No E6 is up either. So that's pretty unusual to have no E6 is up. You know, usually, you know, there's usually at least one E6 in the air. There's absolutely zero tonight, which is very strange. So it could happen tonight. It could happen tomorrow. But it looks like the window based on this NOTAM is going to be from Wednesday through Friday. Rocket launches expected Wednesday through Friday from north central Iran. Okay. A rivet joint is a reconnaissance plane. It's a special plane that has all kinds of uh, cameras and stuff and radars and they can pick up a lot of uh, stuff. So they fly over an area and they can detect the presence of enemy forces. But yeah, it's extremely quiet tonight. Uh, we do have Jake 17 about to take off in uh, Great Britain here. Probably going to go up into the Baltics again or maybe Finland. Um, we have a C-17 coming out of Finland now. Going south. Got another uh, C-17 here going from Ramstein to Cyprus, it looks like. Very interesting. That's a, or actually, no, that's a C-5. Wow. That's a C-5 going to Cyprus, guys. That's a massive military cargo plane. C-5s are the largest military cargo plane in the military um here in the u.s so that's pretty curious 
I do have the EAMs on right now, so if we hear any emergency action messages, if I hear any, you'll hear them too. Um, Vanessa Dubois, good to see you. Ross Snyderman says emergency alert. What's the emergency? Um, David Stewart says my dad will be 91 on April the 10th. Wow. Your dad is, is a very healthy and tough guy to live all the way to 91. That's incredible. God bless your father. That's amazing. I hope my dad lives that long. Um, Syrian President Assad. and Yeah, I already talked about that, Ross. Yep. I already covered that, but thanks for uh, sharing. Yeah, the Syrian president has been evacuated from Damascus, and he's being moved to a Russian military base in Syria. Thank you so much, Ross. I appreciate appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, I discussed that earlier in the beginning. The first like thirty minutes or so, I talked about it. Um, but yeah, it's very quiet over the U.S., which is weird. It's unusually quiet. There's like no E sixes. There's there were no E sixes in the air today at all, which is just really bizarre. So yeah, something's about to go down. Uh simple cooking. Thanks for the donation. I hope you're doing well also. Thank you so much. Hope you had a good uh Easter if you celebrate Easter. I'm not sure if you do. If you do, I hope you that you had a great Easter. And uh um if not, I hope you had a good past couple of days. David says his dad is from Scotland. Oh, Scotland's a beautiful country. The Scottish Highlands. Beautiful place. Yeah, we have a C5 galaxy heading to the Middle East now. That's a, a heavy cargo plane. The heaviest in the U.S. military. Check that out. And then we have Jake 17, another reconnaissance plane. Uh, looks like it's probably going to go to uh, the Baltic countries again. Um, so, but yeah, everything's quiet over the U.S. now. It's pretty, pretty weird. Very unusual. Um, so, uh, we have this NOTAM, guys. Very serious NOTAM for those of you guys just tuning in. We have this NOTAM here. Uh, warning of rocket launches in Iran from Wednesday through Friday from 0330 to 1030. I'm guessing that that's Iran time. Um, so that's going to be anywhere from, let's say, uh, let's see, what time is it now in Iran? It's, it's seven in the morning now in Iran. So that would be uh, eight hours. I guess they're eight hours ahead of us here in the east. So that would be like uh, anywhere from 8.30 to 3.30 every night from Wednesday through Friday. From 8.30 p.m. through 3.30 a.m. Wednesday through Friday. So basically every night from Wednesday through Friday, there's a chance that Rush, uh, Iran could launch missiles to Israel from this area here. Let me show you the map again. Okay, from this area here, you can see Tehran, and they're also showing parts of Iraq as well. Okay, um, so this is the this is a huge area here. Okay, you can see um, all the yellow pins. These are the coordinates of the area, and inside of the area, inside of these pins is where they're going to be launching the rockets from. So very serious stuff.
Silvana Smith says, U.S. troops in Moldova in emerging plan B for Ukraine. Interesting. It's very possible. Very possible. Have a good night, K. Paul. Thanks for staying up and moderating. You're the man. I know you moderated during the eclipse and then you moderated tonight. It was a double header today, a double shift for me and for you. So thanks to all the moderators for pulling a double shift with me. Uh, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. You know, without the moderators, I would not be able to do all of this. You know, uh, it's impossible for me to patrol the chat. So thank you guys so much. Um, EAM seem to be quiet at the moment. Yeah, it's unusually quiet over the U.S. We don't have a lot of military or doomsday planes or nuclear war planes. It's very strange. Very strange. We got an EAM coming in, it sounds like. So we have a lot of stuff going on, guys. It's hard to keep up thing. Um, but I'll be back tomorrow with more more breaking news. Um We have breaking news that apparently one of Iran's surface-to-air missile system has been put into operation around Tehran, according to the latest satellite images. So uh, Iran has set up short-range air defenses around Tehran because they're expecting probably a Israeli strikes retaliation. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, a few days ago that Israel can and will respond, okay? Uh, apparently, earlier today, there were missiles launched from Syria towards the southern Golan Heights. Earlier today, Syria, there were missiles launched from Syria to uh, Israel So it's going to go this week is going to be an insane it's it's going to be absolutely insane this week um it's going to be something crazy is going to go down it looks like Wednesday through Friday um we're going to see probably a massive attack on Israel from Iran unfortunately that's what it looks like. Um, apparently, the Russian military, the Russian army filmed themselves shooting Ukrainian prisoners of war. Uh, there was a new video that came out of some Russian soldiers shooting Ukrainian prisoners of war, uh, which is a war crime.
Apparently there's a rocket alert now in uh, northwestern Israel near the border of Lebanon. A rocket alert. So that, that's probably related to Hezbollah. There's some kind of a rocket alert in uh, the town of Betset in uh, northern northern uh, Israel, northwest Israel. There's a rocket alert right now. Uh, I don't think it's related to um, the situation in uh, Iran, but it could be. Wow, we have some breaking news coming out of Russia. A bridge in western Russia used by Russia to collapse, to uh, transfer military equipment into Belarus apparently collapsed. Three people were injured. A car and a truck uh, fell when the bridge collapsed. Wow. That's pretty crazy. I wonder if if that's uh, sabotage, wow, it's a huge bridge, guys. Wow, huge bridge that Russia uses to move move military equipment into Belarus just collapsed. So, uh, pretty interesting. Wow, that's just absolutely crazy. Massive bridge collapse in Russia, and they're also getting all that flooding too. So Russia's getting hit hard with all this, all these disasters now. Air raid sirens in northwest Israel. Yeah, I don't think that's related to uh, Iran. I think that's just probably uh, that's probably just the. Um, Lebanon, uh, Hezbollah, Lebanese Hezbollah. So, yeah, I looked at the um, NOTAM already. I decoded everything. There's nothing else to decode. I decoded it all. Basically, every night, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night, is the chan there's a chance of Iran launching missiles from uh, eastern um, from eastern uh, Iran it's pretty interesting we have this recon plane here flying over northern Alaska that's pretty interesting we got this RC-135, look at this, flying along the uh, DMZ here. It's pretty interesting. Look at that. So we're monitoring the crap out of the Korean Peninsula. And I wonder if that... Nuke sniffer came back already. We got a E3 now heading towards China. Very interesting. Check that out. Same area as the uh, constant Phoenix flew to. Look at that. Interesting. Yeah, this this plane up here in uh, the north slope of Alaska is pretty interesting. Cobra 63. Looks like it was uh, flying over Prudhoe Bay. It's possible that the Russians sent some uh, bombers up there or something. I don't know. Why is the NOTAM only up to 16,000 feet? Um, I I don't know. I mean, I'm not a, a rocket expert or miss, uh, you know, I'm not a, a pilot or any aviation expert, but I would imagine that... Uh, you know, 16,000 feet is maybe the, uh, 
I don't know. I, I'm I'm guessing that's when they're in their boost phase. You know, that's when they they boost up, and maybe they drop the first booster in that in that section. You know, because they they have like usually two or three boosters depending on how far they're going, how big the missile is. They have you know multiple boosters. Maybe they in that distance. You know, they drop a booster maybe or something and. You know, I, I don't know. Um, it's very strange. But, you know, the, the bottom line is uh, we know everything we need to know. We don't have to hyperanalyze it and comb through every single detail. I mean, we know the main thing. The main thing is that there's a NOTAM for the central part of Iran. They're going to be launching rockets Wednesday through Friday night. Okay, 0330 to 1030 local time. Okay, and so that's eight hours ahead of Eastern time. Okay, right now in Tehran, uh, I believe it's almost eight o'clock. Uh, no, it's actually 723 in Tehran, so I was wrong. Um, so it's seven and a half hours ahead of us here in the east. Um, is that seven? Yeah, seven and a half hours ahead of us. Okay, so 0330 to 1030. That's going to be um, 8 till 3. 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night, basically, is when the U.S. expects Iran to launch these missiles at Israel. So uh, I'm going to be on high alert, guys. If anything happens, I'll go live and I'll stay live all night if I have to. But it looks like it's going down this week, okay? It's going down this week. Uh, drone swarms? No, no, that that's... No, they don't send drones. Um... It's specifically for rocket launches, so I don't think it has anything to do with drones. Also, drones are um, programmed and they move slow. Drones are not fast moving. They they fly like a hundred miles an hour, or you know, like they fly as fast as like a helicopter, or even slower than a helicopter, like you know, a hundred miles an hour, one hundred fifty miles an hour. Versus a plane that's going 500 miles an hour, you know, they'll be able to move out of the way of the drone, but um, it specifically says rocket launches. So I don't think that has anything to do with drones. Also, as far as I know, uh, Iran doesn't have any drones that can fly that far from Iran to Israel. Okay, because the distance between Iran and Israel is 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 huge. It's a huge distance. Okay, and as far as I know, Iran doesn't have drones that can go that far. And even if they do, why would they need to do that if they can just ask Hezbollah or one of the other proxies in the region to do that for them? Um, you know, so no, I don't think it's drones. It has something to do with the missiles. In a straight line from Tehran to Jerusalem, you're looking at a thousand miles in a straight line from Iran, from Tehran to Jerusalem is a thousand miles more or less. Okay, so yeah, I don't think Iran is going to send drones. Plus, if they send drones from Iran to Israel, they're going to have to go over Jordan. And Jordan and Iraq have air defense systems, and those air defense systems could shoot down those drones. So, yeah, they're not going to launch drones from Iranian territory. They're only going to be launching missiles, ballistic missiles, potentially cruise missiles. And if they launch drones, uh, well, they have the Shahid drones, but I don't know if the Shahid drones can really go that far. And why would they overfly so many different so many different countries? They would have to overfly Iraq and Jordan, and uh, there's a chance they could get shot down 
I think they would just have Lebanon and Syria launch the drones, you know? Um, because they have proxies there anyway. So, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know what the range, let's see, what is the range on the Shahid drones? Um, let's see, the Shahid drone. Oh, it has a range of 1600 miles. Okay. And its maximum speed is 115 miles an hour, just like I said. So, yeah, 1,600 miles, it could reach Israel. But still, why would they send those drones that far? It just doesn't make any sense, you know. But it's possible. I guess they could. Um, I guess they could. Um Yeah, the NOTAM came from the FAA. That's correct. Yep. Lee Billy says this is biblical. Yeah, it's definitely biblical. I have no doubt about it. This is definitely biblical. 100%. Ukraine tried to destroy the nuclear power plant to expand the war. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Or they were probing. Uh, for, uh, I don't think... I don't think Ukraine was trying to destroy the power plant. That's actually a bunch of BS. Um, first of all, you're not going to destroy a, a nuclear power plant with three drones. They launched three drones. You're not going to destroy a nuclear power plant with three drones. So that's a bunch of BS. If anything, they were just probing to see what the Russian defenses are like around the nuclear plant. Or it could be a Russian false flag. Like I said, Russia could potentially launch drones at their own, um, you know, what's well, actually Ukrainian, but it's theirs now. They could launch it at at the nuclear plant and then say, oh, it was Ukraine, you know, and blame it on Ukraine. And that could be one way that they, uh, you know, melt down the power plant and blame it on Ukraine, basically. So, So, yeah, they didn't try to destroy the power plant. That was a bunch of BS. Uh, you can't destroy a nuclear plant with with drones. That's crazy. And, yeah, Ukraine wouldn't pollute their own people, right? Yeah, why would they melt down a nuclear power plant and contaminate their own country? That makes zero sense. You know, that's just made up conspiracies and propaganda to make Ukraine look like the bad guy all the time. It's always Ukraine's fault, never Russia's fault. Russia's innocent. Ukraine is evil. I know. I know all the stories. I've heard them. I've been covering the war for two years. I know all the BS. Uh. What's going on, Kim Canadian? 
Thank you, Vanessa and Rodney and Aldo for staying in the stream and moderating. I appreciate it. What's going on, Chris Bacon? Paula, grateful, no end. How's it going, Paula? Uh, All-nighter tonight? I don't know if I'll do an all-nighter tonight, but uh, I'm sure this week I'm going to have to do an all-nighter because uh looks like we're on the verge of something going down here. Um, in uh, the Middle East, something's about to go down. Oh, wait, look, the C5 is going towards Egypt now. That's interesting. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, this is very serious. That NOTAM is basically 100% proof that uh, Iran is going to strike. It's basically 100% proof. Papa G says, hey, Greg, thanks for being our go-to info channel. Yeah, no problem, Papa G. Uh, yeah, very interesting, the flight in Alaska. Yeah, that's a, some kind of a reconnaissance plane. Um, some kind of a recon plane there um, in Alaska. So yeah, something's about to go down, guys. Uh, it's all going to go down. So any last-minute preps that you need, go ahead and, and prepare now. Um, this is uh, very serious, guys. This could escalate into a, a full-blown war in the Middle East. Full-blown war, guys. Just checking to see if there's any uh, updates here. Any new news? This is Flying Fish. Flying Fish. Standing by for traffic. Got an EAM coming in. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I say again, this is Flying Fish. Flying Fish. Standing by for traffic. Yep, standing by for traffic. So, yeah, we got an EAM coming in.
Does Iran have a nuclear bomb? They very well could have a nuclear bomb. We don't know for sure, but yeah, they could have a nuclear bomb. The C5 looks like it's, uh, I don't know where it's going. I don't know if this is humanitarian aid or if this is military equipment. Looks like it's going towards Israel. Yeah, flying fish. Yeah, I heard that sign earlier, that call sign, flying fish. I heard it earlier in the evening. So just to be clear, guys, that NOTAM was issued by the U.S. It wasn't issued by Iran. It was issued by the U.S. because the U.S. has intel. The U.S. has intel that there's going to be rocket launches coming out of coming in from Iran, and so the FAA put out this NOTAM. So this is very serious, guys. This is very serious. So Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night appear to be the days that this is going to happen based on this NOTAM. The NOTAM says the 10th of April through the 12th of April from 0330 to 1030 local time. And local time in Iran is seven and a half hours ahead of Eastern time. So um, I'm going to be monitoring this. I'm going to be watching it like a hawk. And if anything happens, I'll, I'll do an all-nighter if I have to. Um, So we could wake up to a totally different world one day this week. You know, we could wake up to uh, some type of world-changing event with Iran launching missiles at Israel. That's a world-changing event. It's a world-changing event. The future Gog Magog War. Yeah, this is the beginning of the Gog Magog War. I believe this is the beginning of the Gog Magog War. No problem, Cynthia. Thanks for all the support. Yeah, notice is no no Tam is notice to airmen. That's right. Simple cooking. Thank you for another donation. Do I think the USA stands by Israel if Israel gets attacked? Um you know, I would think so, but with this administration, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say with this administration, you know. Uh, I would hope so. Um, but, you know. Thank you, uh, 762. Thank you very much. I don't understand why everybody has this happy birthday thing. I don't know how that started. I heard that uh, one of the, the Funker channel started that thing with happy birthday. I don't understand what that means if somebody 
can explain to me what this happy birthday thing is because I've been hearing it the past few weeks. If someone could explain it to me, I'd appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, I I think that happy birthday, Rodney, I think that happy birthday thing is some kind of an ongoing joke. I just don't know what that joke is. Um, I don't know what that joke is. That's... It, uh, it doesn't actually mean it's someone's birthday. It's it's some kind of a some kind of a joke that I think the Funker channel started. Uh, from what I understand, it's like a code word for something. It's a code word from what I understand. So it's from Funker. Long story. Yeah, chill out with all the, the birthday stuff. I don't know what it means, but it's driving my mods crazy. My mods are are my mods are on high alert, so anytime you guys post happy birthday, you're liable to have your comment deleted. <laughs> um I don't know what it means, but so it looks like it's gonna be Wednesday through Friday night is when this is all gonna go down. So You know, get prepared. Any last minute preps you have to do, do them now before things get crazy. It's a very interesting uh, choice for Iran to launch from this desert. I guess it makes sense. They're going to launch from the desert here, east of Tehran. Yep, the U.S. issued a NOTAM. That's right, the U.S. issued a NOTAM. That means they have intelligence. They have intelligence that rocket launches will be taking place in that area. So, so this could spiral out of control because the U.S. already approved the resolution that they would use any means necessary to denuclearize Iran and you know we would obviously I would hope we would defend Israel and and respond but also Iran has a defense pact with um is with uh Russia so if we attack Iran it's possible that Russia may get involved um you know so uh <clears throat> this could spiral out of control guys this could spiral out of control in uh, multiple different ways this could be a, a very very serious situation so Uh, thanks to all the moderators to, for showing up tonight. Uh, Vanessa Kinkoy. Bailey says maybe they figure if they say happy birthday every day, they'll eventually be right. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, eventually they would be. Kim Cape, thank you for showing up, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Have a good night. 
Hezbollah will also be attacking. It's a joint effort. Many speculate other neighboring countries will get involved. Yes, that's what U.S. intelligence is saying. Uh, Iran. Iran is apparently asking proxies to uh, get involved and launch a simultaneous strike. But uh, Iran is going to be um, launching a, a retaliation directly. It's not going to be through proxies like in the past. What implications for the for North America? Uh, well, we could see oil prices skyrocket because uh, remember all the oil fields are in the Middle East in Saudi Arabia in Kuwait. Uh, we have oil fields there, so uh, Iran could strike our oil fields. They did that a couple of years ago. I don't know if you remember when they launched missiles into Saudi Arabia and they took out a bunch of oil refineries. They could hit Saudi Arabia with missiles to punish us. They already said that the U.S. was responsible. The Iranian foreign minister said that the U.S. was responsible for that strike. And uh, Israel was also responsible. So, you know, uh, it could it could really uh, go sideways in a number of different ways but you know our oil field all the, the world's oil supply is in the middle east so you know they could strike the oil fields in iran or, or in uh saudi arabia iran could strike the oil fields in saudi arabia they could strike oil fields in kuwait they could strike uh container ships they could strike israel they could strike our bases and then we would retaliate back and then Iran, uh, then Russia would help Iran. And then we could go into a nuclear war even, you know, so it could really spiral out of control. This is, this is a very serious situation right now. This is extremely serious. This is probably the most serious escalation we've seen, uh, yet in the Middle East so far. Okay, the the point we're at now is the is the most serious situation in the Middle East so far since the the war started in Gaza. Little Bear, thank you for the donation. Thanks for your hard work and dedication. No problem, Little Bear. Thank you for the donation. Nicholas Jolt says the Samson option will be utilized. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They will use the Samson option. Air traffic appears normal over Iran. Yes, it does. I checked that already. And yes, it does appear normal. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, it depends where those planes are heading to. Are they landing in Iran? Because from what I'm seeing, uh, a lot of planes are not landing in Iran. And they're not taking off from Iran. They may be flying over but they're not landing there. And when this NOTAM goes up, the NOTAM starts tomorrow night. Um, it's going to start tomorrow night. So tomorrow night is when that NOTAM goes up. And, uh, you know, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, another possibility is that Iran could wait until things quiet down a little bit and Israel lowers their guard. And then once Israel lowers its guard, then they strike. You know, that's that's another thing that could happen. Do I think Iran warns ahead of time before they attack? No, no, they're not going to warn. They're just going to launch. Because if they warn, then that's, that's going to defeat the whole purpose. Because then um, Israel is going to be able to prepare... But Israel has put their air defenses on high alert already. So, you know, uh, that's pretty pretty significant. Um, they put their air defenses on high alert. And, uh, we got uh, an EAM coming in. We got an EAM coming in. Um, 
So uh, Israel has recalled all their fighter pilots from leave. They've recalled all their air defense operators from leave. So that's a big sign that something's going to go down. Um, so, you know, any last minute preparations you need, I would do it. Tehran local time is 0800. Check messages when you can. Oh, okay. 800. Okay. Yeah, right now it's 0800. Is that what you mean? Uh, let me see here. You see something here. Uh, Aldo Schmedak, I'm going to challenge you now because you said that there was a lot of activity, a lot of normal air traffic over, over Iran. So I'm going to challenge you on that statement now. Um, there doesn't seem to be hardly any planes over Tehran right now. You can see Tehran. There's like nothing. There's nothing in Tehran. Most of these flights are flying over the area, but there's nothing coming out of Tehran. There's literally one. Some flights are coming into Tehran here. Um. So we have some flights coming in, but there's like nothing coming out of Tehran. You know, it's early in the morning. You would think there would be a lot of flights coming out. It's pretty unusual. Yeah, we actually, a lot of these planes are not even going into Tehran. They're going to like Istanbul. Look, like this one's going to Istanbul. Lots of them are going to Istanbul, but none of them are going into Tehran. So that's pretty unusual. Like this one is going into Tehran, but all the other ones, this one's coming from Oman. Oman is a Iran-friendly country, but all these other flights are going to like Azerbaijan or Turkey. So like this one's going to Istanbul, 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 London. This one's London to Kuala Lumpur. None of these flights are landing in Tehran. Look, the whole the whole area, there's no planes going in and out of Tehran. So that's pretty suspicious. So all these planes that you see flying over Iran, they're flying to outside of Iran. They're not landing in Iran. So, uh, you know, what this means is that all these, yeah, they're preparing to get hit. Exactly. They've all left Iran because they don't want to leave their planes there.
they don't want to leave their planes there so they're all bugging out all these planes are leaving there's no planes flying into tehran so it doesn't matter that there's planes flying over the country yeah they're flying over but they're not landing that's the difference and that's the critical difference because nobody wants to leave their plane on the runway in Tehran because Israel's going to respond and crater that entire airport. So yeah, they may be flying over, but that's fine. I mean, ballistic missiles don't target airplanes, okay? We're not talking about air defense batteries, okay, that target heat signatures or something. We're talking about ballistic missiles that are land to land, not land to air. So the fact that there's planes flying over Iran doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that, oh, uh, everything is normal because there's planes flying over. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, if they're launching ballistic missiles from this area here, this is the area where they're going to launch these missiles at Israel from, this area right here. They're launching ballistic missiles, okay? Ballistic missiles don't target airplanes. They go from one land location to another so um just wanted to make that clear because nobody wants to leave their planes there because they know tehran is a target We have some breaking news coming in from the Islamic resistance in Iraq. The Islamic resistance in Iraq is saying that they have new goals for the next 72 hours. They're going to hit a vital target in Ashkelon. They're going to hit the Ashkelon oil port. Um, or no, I'm sorry, this is the past 72 hours. The Islamic resistance in Iraq hit an Ashkelon target, and they also hit the Ashkelon oil port. That was in the past 72 hours. Um, and uh, looks like the end of Ramadan is... Um, the end of Ramadan is actually at sundown today. So we still have the rest of today for Ramadan to end. So potentially, potentially tomorrow evening, guys. Can I drop pins drop pins at what location? Um what location and th donation Mandy. I appreciate the donation Mandy and thanks for all your help. And Kim Kavana, thank you for the donation. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And Simple Cooking, thank you again for gifting five memberships. I really appreciate it. Uh, not sure what you're talking about, uh, about dropping pins. This is the suspected missile launch site where Iran is going to launch their missiles here. This area right here, east-southeast of Tehran. Uh, from what I understand, Ramadan actually ends... Uh, at sunset correct yep ramadan did not end on april 8th i know a lot of people are saying that but it's not true ramadan it's still ongoing for the rest of today sundown today so that's why the notam starts tomorrow uh because after any time after sundown ramadan is when iran is going to launch their missiles so that could be tomorrow night or actually tonight i mean even though it's the middle of the night but it could even be later tonight um the notam is for the 10th through the 12th so um that's the 10th 
I'm sorry. I actually I made a mistake because I said Wednesday through Friday, but actually, uh, it it's actually Tuesday through Thursday because uh, we're talking 0300 on the 10th local time, which would be actually like in the evening here on the 9th. So actually later today, um, on the 9th, actually 9th in america ninth in america and tenth in iran so i actually made a mistake not wednesday through friday but starting tomorrow it could go it could start tomorrow through thursday basically so so it could it could start as soon as this time tomorrow well, uh, 24 hours from now, we could be in the middle of a, a massive war between Iran and Israel. Literally 24, 24 hours from now, okay? Or uh, even less than 24 hours. You know, even like 18 hours from now, we could start to see missiles flying towards Israel, okay? So, um... I might do a live broadcast every night. We'll see. I might do a live broadcast every night just to make sure uh, I'm live when it goes down. Um, Ramadan ends at the first sighting of the crescent moon. The Islamic tradition follows the moon, not calendar dates per se. Uh, but I thought that they finish. Don't they finish praying at the end of sunset? I used to. I have a friend who's actually Muslim, and he told me he would pray five times a day. Um, and I think their last prayer is at sunset. So after their last prayer, from what I understand. Um, what's going on, Denise Keith? Is this going to be the pop-off for false flag scare event? Uh, very possible. I don't know. Um, that's very possible. Good night, Lee Billy. Thanks for moderating. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, simple cooking. Terry asked for you to look at South Korea. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, South Korea, there was uh, RC-135 there. Um, look at this C-5 galaxy now heading over the Sinai Peninsula. Looks like it might be going down to the Red Sea. Um, yeah, South Korea, we have... Uh, looks like we got two rivet joints. Wow. That's not something you see all the time. Look at that. Two rivet joints patrolling the border with North Korea. Wow. That's insane. Actually, no, it's not two rivet joints. It's uh, One is a VIP plane, a C-32A. That's a U.S. Air Force VIP, VIP plane. And then this RC-135. So, yeah, uh, VIP plane and uh, RC-135. Uh, unless they reconfigured that VIP plane to function as a recon plane. It's kind of making some weird passes here. Pretty strange. It's doing like this weird zigzag here. But yeah, that's what's going on in South Korea. It is Flyfish. Flyfish. Standing by for traffic. Flyfish broadcasting again no no doomsday planes up i think they're up with their transponders off again this is flyfish flyfish standing by for traffic look at this thing up here in alaska that's pretty unusual look at that this is flyfish out Yeah, there's no doomsday planes, there's no nuclear war planes, which means that they're airborne, they're just flying with their transponders off. There weren't any up in the air today. All day long, there were none. 
which makes zero sense. They're flying with their transponders off because uh, Iran is about to go to war. And they have to fly with their transponders off because if there's a nuclear war, if this escalates to a nuclear war, they don't want our enemies to know where our nuclear war command and control planes are. So they turn their trackers off. So, yeah, it's a very serious situation, guys. This is not a joke. You know, a lot of people think this is some kind of joke or entertainment. This is not entertainment. People are going to suffer and die from these missile strikes. You know, it's not entertainment. So I, I actually made a mistake. I was saying earlier that this would happen Wednesday through Friday. And actually, it's Tuesday through Thursday here in America. Because for the NOTAM, it says 0330 to uh, whatever, 1030 every morning uh, local time in Iran. Which actually, you know, they're seven and a half hours ahead of us. So that means it's actually from the 9th to the 11th. So anytime from tomorrow night, Tuesday night through Thursday night this week is when it's going to go down. Um, that's what it looks like to me. They would not issue this NOTAM if they didn't have credible information about it. Okay. So this is not an exercise. This is the real deal, guys. This is the real deal. They want a new world order. Yeah, they do want a new world order. Very true. Very true. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, that's, as far as I know, it's, it's, I don't think that's a cobra ball, is it? Is that a cobra ball? I don't think that's a cobra ball. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I think that's just a, a strato tanker. I don't know if, I don't think it's a cobra ball. Let me take a look again. Yeah, it's not a Cobra Ball. It's a RC-135S. So it's not necessarily a Cobra Ball. It could be. They just don't call it a Cobra Ball here officially. They call it a Strato Tank. It could be a Cobra Ball, though. Yeah, it looks like that's probably what it is. But it's hard to say for sure. It's, we don't really know. 100% if it's a Cobra Ball or what it is. Um, let me pull up that NOTAM again. So yeah, rocket launches will take place. Will take place, okay? It doesn't say may take. It says rocket launches will take place, okay? So this is definitely going to happen it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. Is it going to be Tuesday night or Wednesday night or Thursday night? One of those three days, okay? One of those three nights, okay? 0330 to 1030 local time in Iran, which uh, that's from 8 p.m. till 3 a.m. 8 p.m. till 3 a.m. Eastern time, starting tomorrow night. Okay, through Thursday. Soil radio operator says a few ground stations you don't hear often were conducting test counts and sound outs. I heard Lasius Field and Ascension Island out in the Atlantic. Very odd. Oh, thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, As Ascension Island, that's where they have that big base in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah. I think I heard some of those test counts, actually. I heard some of them earlier. 
Can I scan over to Asia with the flight radar? Yeah, sure. Um, we looked at Asia earlier, but uh, I don't know what in particular you want me to check. But uh, right now we just have an E3 here. Uh, actually, no, an a, a KC-130. There was an E3 that flew towards China earlier. Um, we have this uh, US VIP plane here. And we have an RC-135 in South Korea. So um, that's what Asia looks like. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't do a recap now. If you want to recap, you got to refresh to the beginning of the stream. Uh, it's too much to recap, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to skip back to the beginning. Uh, but basically... Uh, the, what's going on here is there was a notice to airmen that was put out uh, by the FAA warning pilots that there's going to be rocket launches in Iran um, starting Tuesday night through Thursday night. And pilots need to be aware that there's going to be rocket launches and it's going to happen here just east of Tehran. I should probably update that ticker, uh, the breaking news ticker on the top. I forgot to update that. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, the main purpose of the live stream, I put it in the ticker in the top. So uh, for those of you guys just tuning in, it's in the ticker in the top of the screen.
trying to figure out this ticker. Trying to uh, fix it here. Um, anyway, that doesn't really matter. Um, so um, I think I'm going to wind down the live stream, guys. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense for me to leave it up. There's nothing going on right now. So I think I'm just going to shut it down. Um, and then I'll probably be back live again tomorrow if something happens. What kind of missiles are they getting ready to launch? Uh, rockets. They're getting ready to launch rockets. So. Thank you, uh, Illa Davis. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to wind it down. Uh, but I will be back tomorrow night to cover this situation. So it looks like Iran is going to launch tomorrow night, possibly through Thursday night. Um, I've been dreaming all day today, so I'm going to call it an early night. I would love to stay up for the rest of the night but uh, I need to take a break here because I streamed for a couple hours during the uh, solar eclipse and then now this so um, I need to take a little bit of a break because I have a feeling that this week is just going to be crazy so I have to be rested and prepared um, soil radio operator says thank you mods y'all do a great job yeah, the mods are awesome here. Kinkoi, I've been here all night, Kinkoi. I just didn't say hello. Do I think the U.S. will get involved? Yeah, I think the U.S. is going to get involved somehow. They're going to have to. If Iran attacks Israel with missiles, they're, they're going to have to get involved. Um... So, uh, like I said, from tomorrow night through Thursday night is when this could all go down. Yes, uh, Tehran, eight and a half hours ahead. Thanks to all the moderators. Titan Intel, thanks for tuning in. Vanessa Dubois, Rodney Middleton, thanks for moderating. I appreciate it. Amanda Moss, Sonia Lumen. Pamela, thank you. Rob Dutcher. Heavenbound. Princess Buttercup Preps. Yeah, Iran has spent years building rockets and deep bunkers. Yep, they have. Uh, I'll check the ISIS attack thwarted in Idaho. I'll look into that. Definitely. Thanks for the prayers, Denise. I appreciate that. So uh, I'm going to call it a night, guys. Um, and if anything happens, I'll go live. So if something kicks off in the next couple hours or tomorrow, whatever, I'll go live if I have to. But uh, I'll probably end up going live again tomorrow night because I think uh, it could be tomorrow night. You know, U.S. Intel said the 9th. They said the end of Ramadan and it ends on on the 9th. It ends after sundown. So. um. It could be tomorrow night, guys, so I'll be on high alert.
I'll probably go live again tomorrow night. So thank you guys for all the support. Thanks to the moderators. I appreciate you guys. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three Ps. Prepare, practice, and persevere.